Hello, everyone, and welcome to Innovation Coffee brought to you by Arm. I'm your host, Robert Wolf, once again, back again after two weeks of unfortunately being under the weather. You might still notice the remnants of my cold. I have a little bit of a, a stuffy nose, so please excuse me uh, if I am sniffling a little bit throughout the episode. Uh, today, we have a very exciting one for you. We are joined by folks from All Hardware and Gravity to talk about all the cool stuff that they are developing around the ARM ecosystem, in and around the ARM ecosystem. So our guests include Paul Boyko, who's the CEO of All Hardware. We also have Antony Vasiliev, who is the co-CEO of Gravity. And we have Jason Andrews joining us once again, who is the solutions director right here at ARM. Now, on the side, if you're joining us on YouTube, you will have the opportunity to speak with the CTO of both of these companies at All Hardware and Gravity, Alex Spierkoff, who will be answering any questions you have um, about the things that we'll be talking about today. Now, on top of that, of course, if you have any questions for myself or anyone else on the call, just drop those in the channel and we'll try to get to those as soon as possible. If you are enjoying the call, if you enjoy these episodes, please feel free to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, Arm Software Developers. We go live with episodes like this every week. I should say almost every week, unless I'm not feeling well. And uh, we do this every week at 5 p.m. UTC. We're joined by guests all over the world to talk about the cool stuff that's going on in and around Arm. So without further ado, let's bring our guests on now and start to get get to know them, right? Like what we usually do. So we're gonna welcome on Anthony, and we're gonna welcome on Paul, and we're gonna welcome on Jason. Yeah. Hello, hi, hi. How, how are all three of you doing? Don't speak all at once. Very <laughs> <laughs> good, thanks, Robert. Yeah, awesome, thank you. Excellent, y'all got you, your Robert. coffees? Everything is fine, of course. All right, let's do a little cheers, cheers. Uh, cheers to innovation. <sighs> Excellent. All right. So let's start because I just have I have you first here on my on my screen, Anthony. So maybe we kind of do a little round of introductions. I want to get to know you all. So if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself, and what you do. Anthony, let's start with you. Yeah, sure. Hello, everybody. So I'm Anthony. I'm co-CEO of Gravity and a co-owner of Gravity. And here on Gravity, you know, we started like a embedded software development company, but what we are doing now, we are developing HEI tool chains. We are landing and optimizing AI applications and AI models to ARM-based hardware. And also we create our own AI models, especially focused on ARM ethos family, so U55, U65 IP cores. Robert, it seems we don't hear you. Yeah, I, I, I hit the I hit the mute button. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, Paul, uh, nice, Anthony. Thank you for your introductions. Nice to meet you, Paul. You're up. So, uh, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, yep. Uh, I'm a CEO of All Hardware. It's a company that uh, provides uh, the board farms as a service. Uh, we developed it. Uh, we are, had developing it during the last two years and last years. Last year, it was used by ARM on Dev Summit. And today, I will describe how it works. What is it? Awesome. All right. So, all hardware used at Dev Summit. I had no idea that it was used at Dev Summit. I look forward to hearing more about that. And um, I know that, you know, while we're here throughout this hour, we're going to hear all about all hardware and gravity. Now, Jason, you joined us before. In fact, during one of our episodes about Docker, multi-arc, multi-platform use for Docker. And uh, that video got like 20,000 views. Um, so uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, but Jason, tell I know there's a lot of people who know who you are now, right? But for those who have not met you yet, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Robert. So yeah, I work in the uh, ARM tools group and uh, we work across a variety of projects. You know, some of our embedded in IoT, we do uh, projects in infrastructure. Uh, yeah, the last episode is on Docker, so I work across that. So 
you know, my main goal is to have everybody out there do more and make things easier on the ARM architecture, whatever that involves, whatever kind of computing, whatever kind of software, uh, that's what I do. Uh, today, our friends at All Hardware, we did work with last year in Dev Summit, and that is associated with our launch of the ARM virtual hardware product uh, that we started last year at Dev Summit. And uh, we've been working together on this for a while, and yeah, glad to be here and support them. Great. Yes, do more and make things easier. That's that's the motto, that's right? It. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So I have some stuff here on our on our document here. So Anthony, I think um, you have a little bit of a story you wanted to tell us about Gravity. You want to want to kind of kick that off? Tell us how Gravity got Gravity got started and and all that good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So uh, Gravity is already thirty years old, and as I said, we started as an embedded software development company. And mainly we were focused on two directions and still we are focused on uh, creation of low level software like compilers, SDKs, debuggers, all that kind of stuff and creating of board support packages as well. Uh, but the main, the main direction, the business direction of company, main competences lies in creation of compilers. And, uh, you know, when the NPUs and AI uh, rise, so we decided to go into that field to expand our capabilities and Right now, we are uh, working uh, for creation of tool chains and optimizations of the uh, machine learning compilers. And uh, here, we are proud to be a part of the TVM community, which is also supported by ARM. And uh, also, we are part of uh, AI, ARM AI ecosystem. Uh, that's absolutely great. That's an awesome ecosystem. And if you guys not somebody is not a part of it, please join. That's a great ecosystem that helps us to find a lot of awesome companies and uh, to make a synergy because I believe that um, AI technology and AI market is some kind of the you know team sport and you need to, to collaborate with all the others because it's impossible for one company to cover all the technology and uh, to push it to speed up the market. So what we are doing in Gravity, as I said, we are working in a low level field and we are making optimizations, we are making ML models and, and that's awesome. And I'm proud to be a part of this company. That's great, that's great. Thank you for the introduction. And so I have something similar in place here for you, um, Paul, if you wanted to talk a little bit about the origins of all hardware, um, was that was that something you wanted to talk about? Uh, yes. Excellent. Uh, you know that as for many people, for me, uh, programming has been a passion for many years since childhood. And uh, first of all, I started playing computer games. Then in school, my friends and I made our own game. And uh, we had as a major team, we had an artist musician and a few developers and and it was written in an assembler language at all wow. and <laughs> we did it not for to, to earn some money just it was very fascinating and uh, then then i went went to university and uh, there i got interested in compilers reading dragon book if you don't know if uh, it's a very cool book about compilers and many people know it as a dragon book because there is a dragon on the cover. And after university, I was lucky enough to find a job where I had developed compilers. I many times, uh, very long time, I, I made compilers and Initially, we created our own kernel and created a lot of compilers based on that kernel. Then we switched to open source LLVM. And uh, often we, we were in a situation uh, where, where the target platform was unavailable for us. For example, it was on the customer side and we had just a remote access and a lot of issues like for example, if you want just to turn it off and on, uh, you should ask the customer to do it. And uh, after all, 
we just just decided uh, what if we create some device that will do all such stuff. We will place it on the customer side, connect board to it, and it will be enough. And we really created it. Uh, and uh, in a few years, we decided what if other people want to do the same? And so we created all hardware and we can share development boards for anybody you want. Yeah, this this uh, that's really nice story, by the way. Thank you both to you and Anthony and uh, and Paul for sharing your stories. Um, I, I think that's really cool. And in fact, uh, it leads me to uh, something that you have behind you, a bunch of really cool hardware that you have behind you. And I would really love to see this for our innovation coffee cribs segment. Q coffee cribs. No. Okay, cool. So um, that that little segment, innovation coffee cribs. Paul, you said that you wanted to show us some of the hardware you have behind you. Um, is this is this the time? Uh, yes, sure. Perfect. I'm yeah, ready. let's let's check it out. Yeah, and if you could explain explain what you have going on there, because I, I you showed it to uh, to me before. What, what what is everything back there? Maybe not on my table, but very close to it. I'll show you how very early prototype of all hardware was. Uh, it's even not the even not the first one, but maybe second on or third. Do you see some board, some strange light, lighting, and other side stuff? Oh, somebody used. And similar handmade stand here. Maybe it's strange, but it really works even now. I like it. What and kind of what kind of hardware like are you showing there? If if I, if you maybe can zoom in on some of that. Uh, there you go. Yes. Okay. There are uh, several. Uh, Maybe not last, but just two generations ago, it looked a little bit different. Oh, uh, do you see some yeah. both inside? And on the top, you can find an experimental version. We do, we test some new ideas here. You can see uh, IP cams on the top, lighting and boards. And very cool. I I plan to I plan to demonstrate you how it works in action a little bit later. Yeah, we have some demos. I forgot to mention that there's I think three three demos we're going to be showing in just a little bit. So, Paul, thank you so much for sharing that. And I think this is now time for us to dive into the main section. And you have a presentation uh, that you're going to share with us, right? Is that is that correct? You have a, a few slides. Correct. Okay, let's let's get those slides up and, and learn a little bit more about all hardware. Anthony, you also have some slides to share with us. So we'll go, we'll do Paul's yep. slides, then we'll do your slides. Actually, we'll do Paul's slides, we'll do the demos. I know, Jason, you have some cool stuff to talk about, the virtual hardware stuff that's going on, and then we'll go into your slides, Anthony, okay? Sure. Perfect. So, Paul, uh, when you're ready, go ahead and share your screen. We'll bring that up. Mm -hmm. Just a moment. is exciting yeah bruno's saying that that oh nice who who doesn't like demos <laughs> i like demos we have we have a we have a red screen yes we got it there you go okay let's have a look at the slide i just demonstrated it uh, but uh, here you can find it again uh, so it shows the servers of our own design we can install install many development boards in it, and we can give access to anyone you want. So we, let's say, we made a farm that other companies could use. So they they don't have to spend time and money on building and maintaining their own farm. 
And there are multiple ways of using it. For example, for workshops, your attendees uh, may play with the boards remotely, or you can integrate it into your CI CD workflow. Or another example, you can integrate it with your product if it has to deploy something on a development board. The next slide is about uh, the functionality, but I'll show you a little bit later how it works in action. Or you can just uh, go to the site and try it yourself. Here you can find a link. Yeah, we'll be sh we'll be sure to share all these links as well. So you know our viewers kind of know this, but we put all the the links in the description at the end of the episode. So we'll make sure that all these links are available to to you, to everyone when we're when it's over too. Oh, uh, that was that was it. No more slides. I thought we had we had a, a bunch of slides. <laughs> Three slides. Not, not is good. for now. Not for now. Two okay. For, for demonstration. <laughs> Okay, perfect. So, so, so I think it is time for the demos, though. Are, are we ready to go into those demos? Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, just a moment. I'll... Just a few seconds. Yeah, I like. Uh, I, I like. I like demos. I think. Uh, I think it's it's good to good good to just go ahead on those demos. I mean, maybe uh, I guess what we could do while while you set that up, Anthony, did you want to go through through your slides? Because I mean, might as well learn more about gravity first, and then yeah, you know, yeah I can do this. Okay, uh, let's do that. Paul, while oh. you get set up, while you get set up, Paul, we'll go to to Anthony's slides. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Let's do this. I got to keep moving my mouse here on the left. I have this little wireless mouse so that my screens back here don't go to sleep. <laughs> uh, all right. Let us know when you're ready, uh, uh, Anthony. There we go. I think I see it popping up here. Rachel will bring it in. Yeah, it will be a short one, but so I just want to, you know, to highlight the growth of the competences. And so, as I said, it's, comes to, it's customization of the TVM open source compiler. If you're not... Yeah, familiar with the TVM, it's a very good framework, very powerful, which is supported by ARM, and it gives you a really good opportunity to go inside the community and to optimize your SDK and create your SDK for ARM IP cores, AM, UIP cores. Uh, plus to that, I would say, so Paul is uh, telling us about it, this old hardware, which is cloud farm for remote debugging, and as he mentioned, it came out from some uh, it's a separate idea from grow it a business and here we are working in collaboration with arm virtual hardware target and i think later paul will share you how, uh, what, what is the idea so from the gravity point of view we develop as i said uh, uh, models uh, ai models and ai applications and our idea is you know to to give the opportunity for the users not only to run uh, debugging or continuous integration on, on all hardware platform, but to upload uh, upload AI models optimized, created by Gravity or created by themselves, and to try it in a real hardware or on virtual hardware by ARM. That's what we found interesting and would be great to see how it would work. Awesome. All right. Perfect. So let's get that. Uh, out of the way now. All right. So um, very cool. We got to go through, you know, gra gravity. We got to go through all hardware. Now, Paul, are you ready for those demos? Can we pull pull those yep. back up now. All right. So go ahead and share your screen. We'll get that going. And, you know, I wanted to mention, I've, I've brought this up before. Give me one second. Check this out. So we also built something, I mean, this is nowhere near as, as uh, complex as what you guys have, but um, this was something we released in, in January. These are little, uh, little, serve, little racks for single board computers, mm -hmm. and these are little universal plates. So these plates, cool. can you can put uh, all sorts of different boards on here from Raspberry Pis, Jetsons, Xavier's, 96 boards, and they all screw into these plates, and then the plates just slide right into here. And then you can fit, uh, you can fit four of these into a four U chassis, and then you put that into a big old server tower, and you can have like you know, 
two dozen two dozen boards or, or so inside these these uh these for you chassis and um we released these uh in, 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 so that people can get access to these edge devices so um I, I i'm shipping out a bunch more of these out to arizona because that's where the server farm is but we have something similar your boards seem a little bit a little bit better these are like you know raspberry pies and stuff like that but yeah cool awesome okay Right. Demo Let's time. See how it works. Do you see my screen? Right. Yeah, we can. All yes. right. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, what I plan to demo first, how to remotely connect to the board with your local IDE, how to flash the board and the debug, debug firmware. And the second demo is how to use the board from your CI CD workflow continuous integration. We will use the board from GitHub Actions, and you can use it in any other way from command line. And the end, at the end, the, the third demo, I will show how to use not real, but virtual board that is implemented via integration with ARM virtual hardware solution. So let's go, demo, Number one, let's open, for example, Google Chrome and uh, type all-hw.com. Initially, of course, we should sign up. I already registered there. Maybe you should register in initially. And after your login, you will see a list of available boards. If you are not our client, we will have just a few boards on the screen. They are pub publicly available. If you are a client, you will see also your own boards. If you have some coupons, for example, I'll give you a coupon at the end of the last demo. You will have, uh, you will see also uh, some extra boards on this screen. For the first demo, let's uh, choose uh, L5 board of ST. It's based on Cortex M33. You can find a little bit more information about this board. Uh, let's book it. Just click on book. Booking is in progress. Okay, it's done. Your session started. You can find that everything with your connection is fine. Then you can download demo project. You can write your own one or just download already prepared for you. I already did it, so I'll skip this step. And then you can find an information what IDE are supported for this board. In our case, uh, there is only one IDE, IDE, it's Cube IDE. Just click on it and you will find an instruction how to set up it. The most important information is that you should set your, not your, but IP address and port number. You can find them a little bit below here. And it seems it's time to open our IDE. Where is it? This one. Because I already downloaded demonstration project, I just can open it. Uh, where is it? This is this is still the first demo, right? Yep. Cool. Okay, we open it. Let's build it. Ooh. 
And let's set our IP address and port here. Let's check IP address is correct. Let's copy port, set it here. That's all, you can start debugging. Before we will start it, let's go to video and interaction page. Here you can find live feed of the board. Some default firm firmware is already flashed. There is just a counter. It's uh, increased time to time and uh, we have shown it on the display. And you also have uh, an example of interaction with uh, serial port. Here you can type something, for example, hi, press enter, and you can find that the board coded and showed on, on the display. Okay, now let's start debugging. That's really cool. That That's a live camera feed, right? Like the camera feed is just live right there in your rack. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I saw the cameras when he showed us the rack. Yeah. You can see the cameras up Right above, above yeah. Super and that cool. was, I, I think that was the old iteration. Even the newer ones are, are slightly different, but that's really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right uh, you can see that we started, started our debugging and uh, our uh, display switched off. Uh, let's set some breakpoints somewhere. For example, this here. And let's resume. You can see it's, it works. <laughs> okay, nothing happens. Let's just type some text again. You can find that uh, we, are, we just stopped on our breakpoint. Let's just remove it and continue. So it's the end of our first demonstration. I wanted to show you that it looks very similar as if you have the board right on your table. Yeah, very cool. That's excellent. So, so uh, this is kind of, this is unique, right? I, I mean, unique compared to some other board farms in that they try to give you access to hardware, but you, you know, like you just said, it's like having the board on your table. You can see what's going on. The only thing you can't do is unplug it and plug it back in. But I'm sure that, or I'm, I'm actually curious, do you have any ways to cycle the board? Like, can you, can you power cycle it yourself and stuff like that? Yes, we can switch it off and on and you don't have to use IDE to do it or something, just use your web browser and it's enough. nice. Oh, wow, okay, cool. There you go, that's awesome. Um, so that, that was the second demo, right? Uh-huh. And now we're going to do the virtual hardware demo? Uh, yes. Uh, we will demonstrate a little bit different use case. Nice. Second demonstration is about uh, continuous integration uh, scenario. Oh, gotcha. In, in, in first demo, we was uh, like a developer. In the second one, uh, you can imagine that you are a robot some part of uh, continuous integration workflow. Uh, in just a moment. Let's choose uh, another board. For example, from Alif Semiconductor. It's great uh, board, maybe unique, because as I know, it's only one at the moment who already implemented uh, Athos U55 core. And we already have 
<laughs> these birds in our farm in San Diego. And let's try to use it. San Diego. <laughs> that, that's where I am. I'm in San Diego. It's great. Yeah. And let's click uh, another button. Yes. Get CI CD access. Uh, you can click here and find another instru instruction how to interact with all hardware this way. Uh, we, of course, we will not read it right now. You can find it for yourself after our demonstration. Let's just start to use it. In this manual, we can, we can find a link to another demo project. It's a GitHub. And if you are familiar with uh, GitHub actions, you understand <laughs> how it works. Uh, let's choose one of the actions. Uh, of course, you don't forget to uh, fork it to have your own uh, copy. Then you can choose uh, some workflow and run it. Here you can, you can set your settings, for example, what to run, what is input data, and, uh, and you should paste here your API key. API key you can find uh, here. I've just started. And it's running. Yes, we can wait a little and uh, I'll not describe all the details, but uh, anybody can uh, analyze it and find all the scripts, how it works. So uh, all hardware may be integrated, not only with GitHub Actions, but with any other tools that you use. And there is just an example how to do it. You can find all the source code and reuse it. Very cool. Yeah, and we'll we'll definitely be sharing those those links. Uh, uh, you know, again, uh, anything, any resources we can find, we'll we'll make sure those go in the description. Um, mm -hmm. There is a question in in the chat, so I, I don't know. Maybe if you want to tell Alex um, that there's a question in the chat uh, that maybe he can get to from Mahul. Um, so, hey, Alex, there's a question in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. So it's still okay, running, right? Nothing it's to, still... Yes, nothing to demonstrate. It should just uh, wait a little. Yeah. I hope just a few seconds. Uh, maybe nothing to uh, see because it will just uh, finish it, successfully finish it, uh, workflow. And uh, there is just a simple test, but it builds, uh, flashed on real uh, Alex semiconductors board and returns some return code. And that code is processed here in GitHub Actions. So Very you can cool. analyze uh, all, the, all the story in source code. Well, wh while this one builds, um, we can move on to the third demo, if you like, and start showing the virtual hardware stuff. Um, oh, there sure. we go. It just finished. <laughs> Did you see it? Just yeah. finished. There you go. Hey. <laughs> All right. Sorry, Good job. Good. Great. And last demo. Uh, it's it's interesting demo because uh, right now we will use not real hardware, but virtual hardware. And it was possible because uh, we... integrated all hardware with uh, ARM virtual hardware. So in, in list of the boards, you can find not real board, but it works absolutely the same as any of real boards. And it's 
fantastic. And then I'll give you a coupon so you also will be able to find this kind of boards. But right now, let's try to use it. Let's try to use it also from EV. This time it will be ARM Development Studio. So let's book the board as usual. Right. Very similar. <clears throat> However, with this click, we will find ARM Studio instruction. Similar, but not the same. So uh, read it before, before trying it. And right now, I will just uh, show you how how to use it. I already uh, downloaded and imported default project. Let's see how it works. Just, we can show live video of the board because we don't have a board. <laughs> yeah. it's a <laughs> That's great. <laughs> but all the other functionality available. Uh, what to do? We also need to set up an IP address and a port number. That's where, where they are. Here. And let's start our debugging. For some reason, it takes some time, but maybe Jason, uh, you can explain what our virtual hardware is. Yeah, sure. Detail. Yeah, let's do that. So let me give a little bit of a background on ARM virtual hardware. So this is a new product that we launched last year at Dev Summit. And really what it's intended to do, you can kind of see the trend of uh, today's show, right? We're doing more things remotely, more things in the cloud. Uh, and that's what ARM virtual hardware is all about. So, you know, whether you're doing interactive software debug or the CI CD use cases, we can do those on models and we can do them remotely in the cloud. So we're kind of in the middle or maybe let's say toward the start of a kind of transition for embedded software developers to do more automated things like a CI CD to do more in the cloud. And I think you can see from today's show, um, you know, that's the trend. So ARM virtual hardware is our first uh, way that we provided for people to get access to simulation models and tools and just make use of those in the cloud and really saving a lot of time. So you can, you know, stop with all the install on your local machine, downloading all your tools, finding all the things and getting started and literally just connect to a remote machine and be up and running instantly. So you know, that kind of automation is really accelerating the development. So we're putting some links there on the screen. You can take a look at ARM virtual hardware. Uh, we've got some uh, quick start for you to get to some credits. You can run this right in AWS in the cloud uh, as well. So there's a place where you can get the models and tools and just get up and running right away. So yeah, it's, it's a trend of the future. We're getting started on the journey. And I think what you can see today, both with virtual models and the remote boards we've seen from all hardware, it's uh, very, very exciting for the future. So, so Jason, I want to, we still have a few more minutes, Paul, right? Are there a couple more minutes? Is it still building? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, so Jason, I mean, I guess I kind of want to learn a little bit about Maybe some, if you could shine some light on some misconceptions, maybe what people might think like, oh, well, this is virtual hardware. I can't do this with virtual hardware, or I can't do this. Are there any like myths or misconceptions out there why people might say, yeah, but I need a physical board because of this? Yeah, there's a lot of them. <laughs> we get a lot of questions all the time. I mean, um, you know, the, the first thing I guess is the, the the platform we're showing here for our virtual hardware is our Corestone 300. So this is a Cortex M55 with the Ethos U55 uh, hardware. And there is a physical board, which matches the thing identically. We call it an MPS3 board, which is a board you can get from ARM, and it, it matches identical. So you know, it has complete binary compatibility with all the software running, whether it's physical or the virtual board. You can see the virtual screen and, and all the things just the same. Now, where people get hung up a lot, I think, is more on the 
uh, the timing details. So because it's a virtual board, it doesn't run with the exact same clock frequency and the exact same microarchitectural details. And that hangs up a lot of people. They say, well, if it's not really the physical board, uh, it's not good enough. And you know, the reality of it is you can probably do the majority of your work like this on the, on the, the virtual board and find all your functional bugs, find all your software problems. And of course, still at some point, it's nice to have that confirmation of the physical board. And I think what you see today on the show is a combination of do lots of things with the virtual board, use that physical board when you need to. And between those things, um, you know, it makes for a good solution all around. So, um, you know, I think what we're really addressing here is the fact that people don't like to have a giant lab of boards in their a home like we work now <laughs> or in your office in your lab and uh you know we're showing you kind of a combination of virtual boards plus a remote physical board it covers a lot of the things developers do in fact i would i would say most everything people do and and sometimes i you know i i feel like this has happened in the past where you may have some virtual representation of the board especially like if it's an early access board right like let's just say there's this new board that's coming out and they want to make it both in a virtual, like a virtual board access, but the, the hardware is still being released. And in fact, it might be on Rev 1 or Rev 2, right? Yeah. If you plug in that UART cable or you plug in something into that board, all of a sudden other functionality cancels or, or stops working. And so you can't really tell about those things until you actually get the physical board in your hand, possibly something with power management. I don't know. There, there's stuff mm -hmm. that can happen, right? I mean... And so virtual yeah. hardware can only get you so far during those early stages, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's been one of the traditional use cases of virtual hardware is, you know, early access before the physical board is ready. And you can make a lot of progress with that. And now what we're kind of seeing is a little bit of a shift where we're seeing kind of the wraparound on the backside virtual hardware used for CI, CD and automated testing. So, you know, once your software is known to work on the board and you have a good handle on it and then you start making your incremental changes, you can check those on the virtual hardware on the backside. So, you know, it's kind of playing into the whole project, but, you know, it's not 100% perfect. Like I say, it's it is virtual. So there are some differences and um, you know, people who put the time in, they gain some experience. They kind of learn where to use it and what, where the benefits are and when to deploy the physical board. Thank you, Jason, very much. Thank you. Uh, very well, well, well described. Anthony, did you want to, did you want to add anything? Um, seems like maybe you want to add something or to, to what Jason yeah, said? I, th I think J Jason said almost everything. Yes. So I believe that all hardware is a, so, um, for the, for the first for the, for the early software development, ARM all ARM virtual hardware is absolutely awesome, and you can do when you don't have any physical board. Uh, I think and uh, all hardware works on the second phase when you have you know some prototypes of your hardware, but you don't have a lot because it's only prototypes. You need to test; uh, they are not stable. Uh, you need to do a lot of work around this. And this is, a, but this is still a good way to distribute uh, the access uh, to all the versions of the hardware. For example, for your customers who want just to try it, how it works, uh, because uh, as Jason said, people still like to have hardware in their hands, <laughs> and at the end of the day, they want to have it. <laughs> uh, but Bo all, bo both uh, solutions, ARM, um, uh, virtual hardware, and all hardware by uh, Paul. So this gives the opportunity to to speed up time to the market. It's the mo It's the main purpose. That's the main goal. And I think that two, these two solutions they complement each other and they give very good opportunities uh, for AI solutions developers. Very yeah, nice, it's very a transition. Nice. I mean, it's. Um... It's hard for people to let go of that board on their desk and think about cloud things. I mean, cloud computing was the same way. Everybody wanted to have uh, you know, internal hardware, and we started seeing cloud service providers offering remote machines, and we were doing a lot more work that way. You know, I think the concept all hardware is showing here is, is similar in that you know, it's just like when you go launch a virtual machine from a cloud service provider, you go connect to an embedded development board from as a mm -hmm. service remotely. And, you know, this is the start of that, uh, that journey. And it's really cool to see. So, so um, <clears throat> great comments on, on that. Uh, Paul, are we about ready? Because I have one question here for Jason real quick. Uh, are, are you ready, though, after that? 
I'm ready, and uh, okay. I can also continue later. No, it's okay. Thank Just you. one one question here that came in from Hybrid Robotics, also known as Hybonics, um, who's joined us in many episodes beforehand. Um, is there an open source tool chain for the CoreStone 300? Yes, uh, there definitely is. So you can use a GCC for the, uh, the Cortex M55 part. So that's the, the CPU part. And then there's the Ethos uh, U55 tool chain, uh, which is also available from GitHub. Both of those you can find uh, anywhere. And maybe we can share some links after. But yeah, that you want to look for the, uh, the Ethos U55 uh, SDK for that. And then Jason, you have to take the mic and drop it because that was that was a <laughs> that was a perfect answer. <laughs> all right, you you had all you had everything that that was that was needed for that one. All right, Paul, uh, you're up. Thank you for the question. Oops, I clicked that again. Thank you for the question there, uh, Hybrid Robotics, and thank you for the answer, Jason. Paul, you're up. Let's let's close out this demo. So let's get back to your your screen share there, pulling that up, and let's get let's get this demo closed out. Okay, we already connected to the virtual board from our uh, IDE. It's in debugging mode. And as usual, we can, for example, set some breakpoint, let's, let's say here, and resume our running. So, did you catch it? <laughs> some, some text, uh, mm -hmm. some hint appears. And let's, as usual, sort of type something. You can see that now we are, we are here. So our breakpoint works as usual. As for any other real or local board or remote board. So <laughs> it seems our virtual hardware also works fine, <laughs> even together with all hardware. Um, and it's almost the end of the demo. I just uh, wanted to say that uh, if you want to use CoreStone, either from ID or from GitHub Actions or something, you have to have an access coupon. There is. Very cool. I understand so, that uh, there are too many uh, symbols, so you can just use a QR code. This is a this is a coupon that the viewers can grab and they can use this coupon for all hardware. That's what you're saying? Yes. Cool. And I can just send it into the chat. Maybe. Yeah, so so very very nice. Um that's yeah, that would be great if you could post that in the chat. That would be great. Um and so that coupon mm -hmm. code um I, I had no idea we were going to share a coupon code today. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so, you know, very nice of you. Thank you so much. And for all the viewers out there that get to watch this, looks like you get some access um, to this, to this cool stuff that you've seen today. Um, there's the coupon code. You can scan that QR code. I don't know how long this is going to last. So if you're watching this on demand in the future, uh, maybe it's not active anymore, but hopefully it is. Give it a shot. Um, great. So um, is there anything else we needed to cover? Because it looks like on my document, that is the end of the show. Other than um, us having a little bit uh, of time to give a shameless plug. If, if you have anything you'd like to plug before we, we close out. It seems the tone from our side. I think I can add maybe maybe just, just one more idea which came to my head, you know. Of course, it seems that <clears throat> seems that uh, uh, we are entering the new era. Yes, with the so ML compilers are not the classical compilers. Yep, uh, it's next level. And uh, ML uh, OHI and ML solutions and the software development for them. It's not. It's some kind of the next step. It's not the like the embedded hardware, uh, embedded software development. Yes. It's some, for me, it's a new stage, new step, new era, and a new, with the new quality and with, with the new challenges. Because uh, with the, when we, if you will look on the embedded software development, it's very straight right now. It's everything is okay. You have a lot of tools and there are no big challenges there. Uh, but with the, everything about the HAI, there are a lot of challenges from business perspective, from technological perspective. So, um, I think that these new challenges, they will bring these uh, cloud technologies, virtual hardware technologies, 
to people and they will accept this. Very nice. Yeah, well said. No, well put. Yeah. I mean, so I, 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 I can agree with all of that stuff. I think that, you know, virtual hardware, it's, it's on its way. We, we did a, we actually did a show a while back with uh, Renode. Are you familiar with Renode? Mm -hmm. They do a lot of virtual hardware as well. And I mean, this was, you know, over a year ago now and things have still continued to evolve and it just keeps getting more robust and better over time. And so, you know, it's really nice to see, um, I like this to see ARM stepping into this space, of course, because, you know, I'm from ARM. There's lots of cool stuff. There was announcements about the new virtual hardware program during Dev Summit. Lots of cool stuff that's been happening over the course of these last few years. So um, definitely see that, Anthony. Um, any Anything else from you, Paul? Uh, hey, Jason, from you? Otherwise, I'm going to close this episode out. We're getting to the top of the hour. So um, this, this is pretty much the end of the show. Yeah, great. Thanks for having us, Robert. It was uh, interesting. The demos were, were excellent. So thanks for that. Yeah, thank you. And Paul, last, pretty good. Just thank you for inviting. Oh. And it, it is a pleasure to demonstrate all this, all these things. Excellent. Oh. Yes. We're, we're, we're always happy to have you here. And, and, you know, I will say that if at any point in the future you would like to join again, just let us know if you have some new stuff that you want to announce or some new stuff that's coming out that you want to share with developers in the community, you're always welcome to come back and, you know, really enjoyed having you here. So then I'm going to close the episode out now. All right, everyone. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Yes. Yeah, all thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank so you. everyone um, want to thank, thank gravity. Want to thank all hardware. Want to thank Jason, Andrews, Anthony, Paul, Thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure having you here. I want to remind everyone that if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed spending your time here with us, make sure you smash that like button down there right below us there in the, in the YouTube channel. Follow us or subscribe to us on ARM Software Developers. We're also on the same handle, ARM Software Dev, over on Twitter. Follow us for announcements there. And we are here every single week. I'm here with new guests featuring really cool new stuff in and around the ARM developer ecosystem at 5 p.m. UTC for Innovation Coffee. One last cheers here with my empty espresso cup. Cheers to everyone. Y'all have a wonderful rest cheers. of your day. Cheers. Wonderful Thanks. weekend. We'll see you next time. All right, take care, everyone. Have a good one. Bye.